Um, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to um, Rohingya Conference, Seoul 2019. Um, I'm Kinam Kim with Asian Dignity Initiative, uh, moderating this event. Um, I'm honored to, to do so with um, so many people coming from abroad as well as Korea. Um, we, we're a bit, a bit late, but uh, that's okay because we, I expected this a bit of a late, so being delayed. Um, please um, please um, be seated and then we are ready to go. Um, first, I'd like to invite um, one of the local organizers to give you welcoming remark. Um, we expected Jong Hwa Kim to give us welcoming remark today, but for personal emergency this morning, uh, he couldn't make it today. So instead of him, um, I'll invite uh, Jung Hee Min to give us his message. Please welcome Jung Hee Min. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very sad. <laughs> uh, Brother Alosio Kim couldn't join us as he got sick this morning because <laughs> actually he worked very hard yesterday all day long for arranging this conference. Uh, so, yeah, I hope he's getting well soon. Now I am reading his welcome message on his behalf. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Today we have with us many guests from abroad who have come specially for attending this international conference. With us are those from Canada, Myanmar, Thailand, the United States, the United Kingdom, Poland, India, Bangladesh, Germany, Japan, and France. We also have with us here today, many people from Korea, including Professor Yang Yi Lee, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Myanmar. We all welcome all of you in joining with the Myanmar Rohingya. This event is being jointly hosted by Korean civil society groups in cooperation with the Free Rohingya Co Coalition, FOSI, Euro Burma Office, and the Human Rights Action Center. Our preparation team is here to help ensure that you have a safe and pleasant stay during your time in Korea. Since the last year, we have been working together with different organizations in solidarity with the Rohingya. Since the last year, we have been raising funds to help the Rohingya people who came to Korea by holding a variety of seminars and study meetings. This year, we decided to host the Rohingya International Conference in Korea to commemorate the last two years of the Rohingya genocide. The title is the International Conference on Protection of Rohingya Survivors and Accountability for Genocide, Rape as a Weapon of Wars and Genocides, Past and Present in the Region. Although it has been over 500 days since the genocide and mass displacement of Myanmar's minority Rohingya. This crisis remains difficult to resolve with 90,000 Rohingya refugees struggling to live in poor conditions in Bangladesh refugee camps. Despite this, the Myanmar government still denies its responsibility. The United Nations concluded through its investigation that there are crimes against humanity, war crimes, genocide against the Rohingya. However, the punishment of those responsible and relief for, for the victims have yet to take place. In commemorating the last two years of the Rohingya genocide, those from both overseas and within Korea have gathered together in solidarity with the Rohingya. This is a meaningful moment and place to discuss a variety of solutions and together strength to appeal to the international community. 
The Myanmar ruins are hoped to return to their centuries-old homeland. The problem facing the Rohingya refugees is a direct and central problem in our lives. That is the responsibility of all of us to protect, uh, protect the dignity and honor of all, honor of a whole human life wherever, whenever it is under the threat of destruction. The parable of the Good Samaritan in the Gospel of Luke illustrates the principle of solidarity by saying that those who live together should work together. I will uh, quote some part of Luke. A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who both stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance, a certain priest was going down that way. When he saw, when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a certain Samar Samaritan has traveled, sorry, <laughs> Samaritan as he traveled came where he was. When he saw him, he was moved with compassion, came to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. He set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out to Dinari, gave them to the host and said to him, take care of him. Whatever you spend beyond that, I will repay, repay you when I return. Now, which of these three do, three do you think seem to be a neighbor to him who fell among the robbers? Pope Francis has given special attention against the mistreatment of migrants, including immigrants and refugees, and he has expressed the churchy interest in protecting immigrants and trafficking victims. In all stages of migration, especially from the departure, journey, arrival, and return, the Catholic community has an obligation to welcome, protect, promote, and integrate all migrants. Everyone here together, we must continue to inform the international community of the Rohingya genocide and the, and the inhumane conditions in the refugee camps. In Asia, in particular in Korea, there is an important international presence in relation to the human rights movement. Please give your attention to the Myanmar Rohingya who are suffering serious human rights abuses. They are our brothers and sisters. Hear their cries, and let us be together on the path of hospi hospital hospitality, protection, promotion, and integration. Thank you all again for coming here today. Thank you. Thank you, Chang Min. Um, this is this event um, not be happening without many people's effort. This is a collective effort from not only. Korea, but also uh, from around the world. Um, since over the last six months, um, Korean civil society members gathered together to discuss about having this event here in Korea. Um, that, that include uh, 19 uh, NGOs and other individuals who contributed their, their times and energies here. Um, now I'd like to invite um, our international co-organizers um, we have four um, main contributors here. So, uh, Free Rohingya Coalitions, 4C, and Burma, Euro Burma Office, and Human Rights Action Centers. Um, on behalf of these four organizations, I'd like to invite Maung Zani to give us um, opening remarks. Please welcome. I didn't learn this uh, in Seoul. My roommate at the uh, university in U.S. was a roommate, uh, Jae Bong Lee. <laughs> and so I learned a few words 
안녕 하세요. 감사합니다. But don't try to have a conversation with me in Korea. Um, firstly, I want to extend my deepest uh, gratitude to Kinam and his colleagues. Kinam works until you know, the uh, tears swell up in his eyes and drive home uh, very tired with two kids. Um, I also want to extend my uh, deepest um, appreciation to the Special Rapporteur and Professor Yang Hee Lee. For the last almost six years, she has been an extremely vital and critical and hopeful voice for the Rohingya people. Uh, she, uh, we are very honored that she accepted her, uh, our invitation to be the, uh, the main keynoter for today's event. Um, I don't have a prepared remark, but uh, <clears throat> this is what I want to say. We are having this event to commemorate the second anniversary of genocidal killings. Um, I said genocidal killings, uh, second anniversary because the killings are not only the only and sole act of um, genocide. Genocide in my country has been going on for 40 years, starting with the first wave of terror campaign against um, innocent, vulnerable, and most wretched community whom we rejected from their previous status as full and equal citizen of our country as well as an ethnic nationality integral to our union. So it is fitting that um, the Jesuit University uh, <clears throat> generously allows us to use its, uh, this facility to commemorate this um, important event to discuss the predominantly Muslim population and how they have been subject to uh, genocidal policies of my own predominantly Buddhist country. In this room, there are Buddhists, uh, there are um, uh, Christians of different denominations, there are secularists, there are Muslims, and there are other co-religionists. We're here not because they are Muslims, not because they are Rohingyas. We're here because they are humans, like you and I. And every person killed is someone else's daughter, mother, grandmother, grandfather, husband, son, nephew, niece, friend, acquaintance. Why did we come to Korea? When, when we uh, <coughs> met in uh, New York uh, in the previous um, international conference held at uh, Barnard College and uh, Columbia University in February, uh, Kinam Kim, uh, the tireless organizer here, and, and uh, I had a brief chat. I said, hey, let's have a um, a conference in your country, uh, in the middle of Asia, one of the largest and most vibrant uh, economies, as well as, I would say, the most vibrant civil society in all of Asia. Uh, if you look at the title, accountability, Korea is, in, uh, <coughs> to the best of my knowledge, the only country in the whole of Asia where accountability is seriously pursued. I don't need to go further into details how many presidents you have put behind bars for corruption, for mass murders. And so we look to um, Korean civil society, if not Korean governments, to stand with the wretched of Burma. The second reason that we wanted to have this conference with the focus on the persecution of women, and needless to say, children, they go together. Women and children are typically the, the bearers of the brunt of all types of uh, atrocity crimes, whatever the legal names. We come here because you have a long running issue of comfort women. Our countries suffer under the Japanese fascist military occupation. We for three years, but wretched three years, but you much longer. And Japan, I have a, a dear Japanese academic friend, uh, Michimi Sensei here. He's one of the very, very rare kinds of Japanese scholars who 
know where, when his country is wrong and who, is, who has the intellectual integrity and moral strength to say my country is wrong. So in, in the footsteps of people like Michimi and others who risk being labeled enemies of the states or national traitors because they or we do not go along with this American propaganda, my country right or wrong. My country wrong is simply that my country is wrong. In this case, like uh, Japan during the uh, imperial period, a military period in the um, 30s and 40s, my country today, that has the Japanese trained and Japanese patronized armed forces are irrefutably in the wrong, having committed every single legal crime that has been encoded in the body of international law since Second World War, and above all, genocide. I, would, I won't go into the genocide because uh, Professor Yang He Li will expound her own learned interpretation of what genocide is and uh, why and how Myanmar acts and policies towards Rohingya people constitute nothing less than a textbook example of Lemkinian genocide. The, se uh, the third reason we want to come to a uh, Korea is Korea, South Korea, both Republic of Korea, the South Korea, and the one across the border, uh, Pyongyang, have been involved in arming the Burmese military that today stands credibly accused of committing gravest crimes in international law, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. And I am known as a human rights activist, foul mouth, but my actually uh, training and specialty is the, st uh, the study of military affairs. I used to travel around Southeast Asia and Asia, tracking down strategically placed army defectors from my country that have trained in Russia, that have been on uh, arms uh, purchase mission to Pyongyang. Uh, while Pyongyang was designing and building military bunkers and underground tunnels for the purpose built a Naypyidaw, the new capital, since 2006. South Korea's leading national corporation, Daewoo, step into the space that German, West German company, Fritz Warner, vacated. After the Second World War, Burma allied with West Germany while sending our intelligence officers to East Germany to receive training from Stasi, which is the uh, East German uh, uh, intelligence. After 1988 uprisings, West Germans returned to Burma from building up the Burma's light arms manufacturer industry. We call it German Mauser rifles. That was the one, the kind that was used by the German SS officers against their victims during the Second World War. They would step into the space that German vacated, helped manufacture automatic submachine guns that were used against Rohingyas as well as other ethnic nationalities. So I think it is morally and strategically fitting that we are here today to appeal to the Korean citizens who know very well what it means to be violated and never been offered official or popular apology. My last comment as a Burmese and a Buddhist from a family that has been with the armed forces since its founding in 1942-43, I offer my deepest apology to the Rohingyas. I'm sorry. <laughs>